you know anything about these instruments here? I know nothing about nothing. anything. Okay. <laughs> Very quickly. I can start barely drive a car. Start on the left, okay? I don't have my phone. A non-pilot trying to land a 737, and the results are not surprising. Light slow. Light slow. Light slow. Small, small. Oh, it's going to be a hard one. This is part two of our Delta Flight Museum full motion sim experience. So we're ready to go. If it looks like we're going to crash, we're going to switch it to flight freeze that brings everything to a stop. <laughs> My name is Mike Raffis, and I operate the 737 200 flight simulator. We have anywhere from total novice, never flown anything, to accomplished pilots come in. So we're at the Delta Flight Museum. I'm going to see if I can't crash a 737. I'm not sure how accomplished as a pilot I am, but I think we can all agree that Brock is definitely a novice. Is it fun? I'm having the time of my life. He and I flew it to Atlanta on a rainy weekend for this simulator experience. Brock's been on board for most of the Flight Chops adventures, working really hard behind the scenes, capturing all the really cool B-roll. Wow, Brock is cocky. He's staying there. <laughs> Stay going for the team. Oh, that's awesome. He left the camera and he ran for it. <laughs> he wanted to get the shot. And that allows me to make the montages that help explain the exploits and adventures that we get up to. But it's not all hard work. He did get to enjoy himself at the meetup we had in Atlanta, but only after he got a few shots of me enjoying myself first. <laughs> but flying the sim is one of the few aviation adventures we've done that he could try hands-on. So I'm just gonna get in here real quick to roll this one. And after all the things he's filmed with me, he definitely deserved this. Rolling? Yeah. Bonus footage? Yeah. Might as well. Fun. Rock. Delta used it for quite a few years, training 737-200 pilots, but we got rid of the aircraft. The aircraft itself is obsolete, but uh, we kept the simulator. Delta wanted that to be part of its legacy. At considerable expense, uh, they decided to unbolt it, move it over here, and you'd think that's a fairly good expense, but actually the expense is day-to-day -day maintenance. Apparently the museum runs the sim to break even, so this is an amazing deal to fly a level D sim, especially when shared with a few friends. Straight level out, and that's when the best come on down low. We're going to fly right down Central Park there. And we can do things that you wouldn't do. If you wouldn't like fly under the bridge like we do at LaGuardia or you know, anything like that. You wouldn't fly down Central Park. But it's kind of fun to do that sort of thing in here. When I get my turn, we'll take it a little more seriously. But for now, let's have some fun with Brock. Terrain, terrain. Sink rate. 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 She's Paul's neighbor and hosted Brock and I, and there were fresh cookies in our room every night. Thanks, Andy. You're awesome. And riding right seat with Brock is Chris. He founded Angle of Attack, who produced flight training media. And he's got an awesome podcast. He and I got to Oshkosh together, and this whole adventure was partially thanks to his connections. Let's check back in with Brock's fun flying shortly. But for now, I'm flying with Jason. He's a 737 sim instructor, and we're not going to be quite as silly. So I need to back off power a little bit, eh? Under the hold that 250, there's a white carrot. Some fellows come in and they're accomplished pilot. They want to practice procedures, and we can do that as well. You're doing good. Now it's all visual. What are minimums here? Uh, two order. Doing great. On speed, bring back that power a little bit. Yeah, yeah, because we're high now. Yeah. And then you're gonna you're gonna fly that uh, speed bug in now, and you're gonna just use a visual reference to the runway, okay? Friends of mine often ask if I was in an airliner and someone said, the pilot's got food poisoning. Oh my God, can you land this thing? It's a nightmare. No. <laughs> it's like comparing a car to an 18 wheeler with like 16 gears and air brakes. What's my round out altitude? Just do it visually? At 30, 30 feet. What's field and elevation? I'll, I'll call you, I'll call your altitudes. So you're a little fast. I'm a little fast, a little high, right? A little bit. If they want to just practice landings, we can just land. I can reposition it out and we can land again. You don't have to take the time to take off and fly all the way around. 
So final checks are being done now? Yeah, everything's good. You got gear down three green, right. we're set, and we're at 500 feet. I'm calling you at 400 feet. And then you did your first approach, and Jason talked you through it. Again, a little task saturated. Like, a little now, now I'm low, eh? Yep. Don't forget to go to flightchops.com for a monthly contest. You can win stuff. Going great. Looking really good. How you doing over there? I'm feeling good. All right, looking great. And then I'll call you thirty about 100 feet. But honestly, it really wasn't that scary different. I was quite impressed with that. I felt like I could fly it if I stopped worrying about all these knobs and buttons. I don't know what they do. So now 30 feet, I'm going to have you drop the 50, throttle, okay? 50. 40. 30. 30. Bring the throttle back, 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 30. back, pitch. Little, we're good. A little too high. A little too high. There you go. Okay, Whoa. steer with your feet. Yep. Reverse thrust. You're going to pull those straight back. There's like the reversers. Yep, straight up another gate. There you go. Oh, man, that was cool. Those came down a lot after we landed, so I yeah. guess I had it up enough, eh? Yeah, you did good. So you can land a 737. Oh, man. That was intense. And then you got the brakes. I didn't, but I do now. <laughs> I felt it really slowing down. Was that you or was that reverse thrust? No, that was reverse know. thrust. I imagine sitting down in this thing and just embarrassing myself. I thought I would crush the gear, like flare too low and crash the damn thing because it is so much different in terms of your eye to ground height and the thrust reacting to your throttle inputs and so on. I, I would love to know if I, if I didn't have any assistance, how much I would have mashed the uh, main gear. Well, but, you, wanna, you wanna try it again when I, I won't say anything? Just a seven mile final? Yeah, all right, let's try it again. All right, so I'm gonna try my second one with no help, but let's check back in with Brock's flight. Anybody can fly through the top of it. <laughs> like this. Oh, Very nice. A little lower. Pull up. Skim the water. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. I had three cameras rolling on Brock's flight, but unfortunately the battery in the exterior sim view had died, which is too bad because I would have loved to have seen this angle from his landing, which is epic. Let's have 15 flaps. Anyway, we had great coverage from three interior cameras and Brock's crash is definitely worth waiting for. But let's check back in with me trying to land with no help. Okay, so what I do need to know from you is what is the configuration of the airplane right now? Gear is down, flaps are where they need to be for final. So all I'm worrying about is power and flying the airplane. That's it, it's all configured for you. Then you flew your second one. No help from Jason. Once you got started, you looked outside, you set your aim point probably. 1,000 kept it right on glide slope even though you were looking out we could see it there on the simulator instructor panel what your glide slope deviation was yeah i'm low 500 it's funny to watch jason restraining himself he did a pretty good job avoiding helping me at all but it's important to note that i did have a pretty serious advantage having already done a takeoff so i had a feel for the eye to ground height when the airplane was sitting on the ground but in an actual situation, knowing how to work the radios would have been key. And that's the first thing that I wouldn't know how to do, and we didn't really talk about that. That's probably the big roadblock right there. I would have to get help from someone on the ground to get me set up. Like, we, we kind of set it up that I was already on final. So trying to intercept an approach or something like that, that would be the deal breaker, I think, is that I would have to get in there and get the radios working and talking to somebody. 100. 50. 40. 30. 20. Brought it right in for a landing. Nice smooth touchdown. I was holding on to my seat, I got to admit, <laughs> but it was a nice smooth touchdown yeah, and roll out right on center line. Yeah, I was definitely looking to err on the side of flaring high instead right. of missing and smashing the nose into it. But what, what's the uh, risk there? I guess I was holding it mushy too high. How high off the ground was I hanging in there? Oh, I don't know. I wasn't looking. I was just looking outside, so I don't know altitude wise. Right. But um, the risk is a stall right. and a tail strike. That's true. I wasn't thinking about tail strike. Right. I played tail wheel, so I was like, ah. You got a nice touch. That was an awesome approach. You were in the groove. I'd give that a solid B okay. from a, someone who sits through it all the time. Now let's see what an F looks like. And honestly, this is just good fun. We're laughing with, not at Brock. Okay. Hold back on the color. Stop laughing, I swear. Not helpful. Light slow. 
Wide slow. Wide slow. Wide slow. Wide slow. Keep your eye on that runway. Wide slow. 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 Oh, it's going to be a hard one. Oh, nice. You saved it. No, no. We did not survive oh, that. Oh, oh my god. Banking. 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 Oh, we did not survive that. Banking. We haven't crashed yet. No. No, look at we're, we're up in the air. Banking. Yeah. I don't think it's recoverable. It's don't even know where we're going. Banking. No, wait, there's no way we're covering this. How do we turn off that stick shaker? Oh. Oh, I, I, I didn't see what happened. Thanks a lot, Paul. This was really awesome. You're welcome. Happy to do it. So thanks again to the supporters on Patreon for helping make this possible. And please visit flightshops.com to check out the monthly contest. The sponsors are giving away nearly $1,000 worth of stuff, but this month we're adding a Bose A20. I'm really excited to give that away, and I want to see one of you guys get it. And as always, keep your flight chops sharp. I think maybe I didn't, I thought that like there was more to do and, and, and yet I was on the trajectory. I should have just sort of like yeah, maybe gone on with the way things were doing, the way things were going. <laughs> okay. The motion um, got kind of excited and settled. So. Man. <laughs> That's pretty exciting. That was pretty exciting. <laughs> but I wanted you guys to have a good time. I, 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 <laughs> well, I guess I did. Stay in the seat. Sorry. I don't know what happened, but you were there. I was there. I held on for dear life. <laughs> <laughs> That was fun, man. <laughs>